In this video, we are going to check the different solution to create curved elements, either in two dimension or three dimension, as the one on the right hand side. So they all start the same. What we want, what we want to have is first setting the surface and the guideline. In the example where we want the element to be in one direction, like this one, we simply need here to draw the one of the guiding line from the element. This can be a line or a spline. To create a spline or a line, you will simply need to go to add line or spline. We are going here to create the first line just to show you how you can create curve line in Kaiser 3D. So here I'm just going to enter a 2D plane that passing through the surface. And from here, I want to start the line perpendicular to the surface. Here we'll see that uh, if you start from the line or the surface, it's not the important, but always make sure that the surface is perpendicular to the line. This is how you can actually set the section of your beam. If you need to then add an actual plan cut to your beam, this is something that you would be able to do afterwards. So when you create this, this element, see it as when you create a rectangular element when you first add, add a beam. You would then add the cut afterwards. So here I just uh, I would like this to go like 20 feet uh, in that direction. And here from a vertical like six six feet on the right hand side. So I'm just going to add this horizontal line and simply create here the curve. So here I can select directly the line I want to be tangent with. So this one and that one. And now I simply need to add here that radius. So let's go with a six feet radius. And now we have all the lines we need. I'm just going here to erase the one we don't actually need. And here we go. So add line. And here I'm just going to add a single line from the first one. And here we need to select the intersection between the line and the circle. And to follow this circle here, the only thing you need to do is using the option either A to set an arc or C to follow an existing auxiliary circle. And this is the one we are going to use. For this one to be uh, to be used, you simply need to place your cursor on top of the circle you wish to follow and then simply press C. And here, as you can see, my line will always follow that circle. I'm just going here to that intersection and all the way here. Now that we have our line, we can actually get back in 3D. Now let's generate our first element. The first option here is found under the modify menu of your surface. So here we can simply select the surface and go to modify, option, and surface to beam, panel or auxiliary element. Here I want to generate a beam. And here I want it to be by a line on it. All the other option here will always cre create straight element because it's always by a vector that is normal to the element. Or of course by vector, but this is always straight element. By line or edge can be used on an actual polyline. So here I simply left click here and now we have our element. As you can see here, if I were to measure the section here, we do have a face of two feet high by eight inch wide, which is actually exactly the same as the dimensions. So here we kept the section throughout the beam. As we said earlier, you can use this also using spline. And one thing here is that the line don't need to always go by a form. Let's say that I will move this line like in the middle of this surface. So try middle and the diagonal. So here, modify, option, 
surface to beam, beam, and by line or edge, and here we can select this one. If we come here and check the section, so height here of the segment, and the width, we have here the exact same result. The main difference between spline and end line is a line here is a straight line followed by a actual arc of circle and then again a line when this one here is actually a spline meaning that it's a continuous curve so here i've made it to go from different points um, in order to have something which is similar than the pretty much similar to the other one so it's a bit shorter but the result here will be a seamless face so that's one of the, the main difference between the two um, even though they are pretty much, much at the end. And then we have more advanced option. The other option I would like to use here is just going to start only with this. So here this is a two-dimensional curve. Quick way to do something like this is by using surface. So what we did here is simply from a from view, we drew the top and the bottom line using surface and did the same from the top view. So in order then to generate lines, what you can do is simply selecting and cutting the surface. So if I here go cut, remove first off and select this one and if I'm then selecting this at the bottom and so those are surface modify option surface to line we can get rid of the one we don't need to keep only the top one line that I will solder using the shortcut B and now this is a line we can use as a guide so here once we have our guide line we could be using the option we've seen earlier so here we'll see that the result might not be the one you, you expect so here if we go again with the same exact function so modify option surface to beam beam and line or edge it seems to work here but we will see that the orientation of the beam here I wanted it actually to be vertical here so in that case, this option cannot be used. If you would like to force specific section at along the beam at different location, shape or orientation, you will need to use several lines or several surface actually. So here what we did is simply placed section for the beam a different location on the beam with always the right orientation according to the line so here we always wanted the section to be perpendicular to the guideline so if you would like to use something like this you won't be able to go to modify because actually we are going to use several surface to create one element so what you want to do here is go to add spline and here you will need to select the surface but in a specific order, so always from start to end. So we are going to start at the bottom, middle and end. Then right click. And then here you can or not select a guideline. Let's say that we don't select this line and simply confirm. And here I'm just going to go with linearly. So it's always linear connection between my, su my surface. And this is the option we get. So basically, it's try to be a smooth uh, transition. But here, as you can see, it doesn't really follow the line we wanted. So what we can do here is actually select the line. But again, you will see that for advanced shapes like this, only referring to one line can give you strange results as you can see here it simply follows 
there is one edge that follow this line but yeah the rest of the beam seems to be a bit strange it's simply because for the thing that is not set by an actual edge it's going to use the same calculation that we did previously without the guideline so if we would like to create something like this like a curved beam in two in three dimensions we would need actually to display and create all the different edges of the element so here what I, what we've done is simply using the same option as i showed earlier using simply surface and using the inter intersection of this surface to generate these lines one thing that is really important is for the lines to be able to be used in the spline command they need to intersect your surface corners so here we have basically all the corners of the different section are connected by these splines and here we can simply go add spline and select our surface one by one right click and here we can select all the lines that i'm going to select here directly with Control shift left click with the activation line and pressing right click here i'm just going to use the linearly and hello torsion and here we now have the beam the only thing here is that the system axis of a beam generated like this is not always right so here you see that the lengths go from left to right so here always go to modify option and update system axis just going here to also change its color or material to add a better rendering so this is the different way to create curved elements in one direction or two directions.